I, I wasn't going to do a video because I was at home when the pay-per-view live event happened, okay? I was at my mom, my son, you know. We, I didn't watch it, though, sort of. Um, he was watching, we were watching the movies, and I had my on my phone with no sound, so I can kind of look at it here and there. First complaint. Why a two-hour pre-show? Because I tuned in, right, I tuned in at noon, thinking that was it, right? So I had a pre-show going. I actually started at 11, thinking it was a one-hour pre-show, and then we'll go. Once noon happened, though, I was like, why are we... There was like a, a, a Bailey thing going on. Like, okay, this is going into the WWE Network thing or whatever. Going to the show. No. It was a promo for Bailey's... What happened, how Bailey became Bailey and what, you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, it's like 12.03. Why the show should have started by now? No, because then it cut back to the, the pre-show or whatever it's called now panel and there was a little, I'm like, oh, we still got another hour. This is fine. Whatever. So this is not going to be a traditional. I'm going to talk a few talking points from throughout the night because I do want to talk about some things. But the most important thing I want to talk about it's why the WWE do this. Why? Okay. Now you know me. I'm a CM Punk fan. All right. I'm a CM Punk guy. I'm the guy that's gonna, you know, stand up for CM Punk. But why did they do it like this? Okay. I hate. And I mean hate. I mean hate. When they have a superstar. Come out to the ring, interrupt the match, and cost someone they're in a rivalry with a championship and say, I want to have a match with you. Idiot, if you had waited until after the match to attack them, then your match with them would now be for a goddamn title. It makes said superstar look like a complete and total idiot. For interrupting and causing someone a title. I know. I laughed my ass off when Punk did it at WrestleMania, but that was different. This is clearly to set up some sort of match between them. That's different. There was rumors, speculation this was gonna happen, and I said they better not do it because it I hate when they do that and it makes the superstar look stupid. And what do you know? CM Punk Punk? CM Punk CM Punk looked like a total idiot. When he came out there as a second referee and counted one, two, and it went like this, cost Drew McIntyre the title, when all he had to do was wait till the match was over, then attack him, then his match, whenever they have it, is for the world heavyweight title. Okay, I know sometimes people say, well, the rivalry, this is a rivalry that can work without the title. Sure. Fine then don't have one of the people in said rivalry go for a title if you're just going to do this. Okay? It doesn't make any sense. And it makes the person who does this, like I said, CM Punk in this case, look like an idiot because he could be going for a world championship now and now he's not. It's completely and totally stupid. And I... Don't know why WWE keeps doing this trope. I thought when Vince McMahon left, these stupid ass little tropes that they did will go away and we can actually have some actual common sense. But apparently there's still some stupidity hanging around WWE HQ because it's not gone yet. Right? And furthermore, okay... This is now the second time in a row that they've done Clash of the Castle with Drew McIntyre in the main event, and he's been and he's not won the championship. With Roman Reigns, I understood. But this is Damian Priest. Okay? Drew absolutely could have gone over here. And probably should have. Drew could have won this match, and no one would have batted an eye. You know? 
he didn't have to lose. Sure, it's probably leading towards Damian Priest losing to Gunther at SummerSlam, and you probably don't want Drew to be the one to lose it, but, you know, because they're, they're probably going to do Drew versus Punk at SummerSlam, and it's not going to be the title because Gunther, you know, Gunther's going to have that title shot, you know, sure. Fine. The King of the Ring needed some kind of prize anyway. So, yeah, I'm glad they finally get a title shot at SummerSlam. That's how Brock won the WWE Undisputed title. Became WWE title, you know. So, yeah, I understand Gunther's probably dethroning Priest. But, still. Still, I don't know. Again, no. Gunther dethroning McIntyre as world champion would also be a bigger oomph for him. Because Gunther beating little should-be-in-the-mid-card guy Damian Priest. It's like... Gunther Priest. That's what it is. I'm sorry, I do not see Damian Priest as a main event player. Like, you know, I had my thoughts with Seth Rollins when he had the money in the bank back in the day, and I said, nope, he's giving me one of those, it's not going to cash in, and he did it, and he changed my mind, I'm not changing my mind on this, Damian Priest is a mid Carter for life, like a Dolph Ziggler type, maybe not losing all the matches like Dolph Ziggler, but he's one of those belonging in the mid card, and they need to get this world title off of him, again, I was kind of thinking he should not win his cash in, but it happened. I just, I just think we need to get the world title off because they're not doing a goddamn thing with it. All the focus is on Dom and Liv Morgan for some reason. And uh, just look at Raw, all right? All the storylines with the Judgment Day have zero to nothing to do with the world title, right? He was going against Drew McIntyre. All the talk was McIntyre and Punk, and he's the third man. He's the world champion, but you people care more about Dirty Dom and Liv Morgan having an affair behind Ray Ripley's back than anything. You know? No one cares. Because he's not main event material. He's not. No. I'm sorry. All due respect to Mr. Priest. He's not. They picked the wrong guy. And they better do it right this year. Yeah! And if you don't, I wouldn't you say, oh, LA Knight's going to win Knight's nice title. He can do both. He can win the Money in the Bank, right? At Money in the Bank, maybe he can win it. And then go to SummerSlam to face Logan Paul. Yeah, to win the U.S. title. Yeah, because The Miz did it, right? The Miz had the Money in the Bank. He was also a U.S. champ and tag champ. Maybe not all at the same time, but he did it, right? So you can absolutely... Have him hold that briefcase and win the United States title and carry that U.S. title until, say, WrestleMania. Have him cash in later. Who knows? But I'm just saying. Let's talk quickly talk about the other matches in here. First match of the night, surprisingly, AJ Styles, Cody Rhodes. Or should I say the women's tag team champion talent name. Yet Kevin Dunn's gone, but people still budging. Anyway... Uh, I do not like I Quit matches because they always end stupidly. They always have a stupid finish. Either someone posts a recording of the other one saying I Quit and it's a screw job, or it's like in this case where someone is threatened with something very dangerous and they say I Quit so it doesn't happen and it still happens anyway, such as John Cena is threatening to, uh, AA Batista off a car and he says I quit the scene does it anyway and in this case uh, AJ is handcuffed to the ring rope and Cody's about to hit him with the stairs still steps and he says I quit I quit but Cody still does it anyway stupid finish a women's tag team match had me shocked because they changed I'm not going in order because I forgot one but we'll get to it I'm going through the ones, because there's a big talking point at the end here, but anyway. 
Uh, because everyone going is like, oh yeah, it's going to be Bianca and Jade. They're going to retain, they're going to retain. Well, once you really thought about it, you knew Piper never wasn't going to win the title. Everyone had a little inkling that Drew wasn't going to win. They had to give someone from Scotland to win. So, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire won the Women's Tag Team Championships. Good for them. That's that's good. I had Bianca and Jade to win because I had to lose so quickly, but it happened. No. And then, of course, the Women's Championship match... Eh, it was fine. Of course, Bailey retained. You know, I don't, I didn't see that match because we were watching, watching. Then we had to go to the liquor store, right? So, uh, by the time I got back, the match was over. One of the event. So, yeah, Drew McIntyre was making his entrance. I was like, we didn't need broken dreams. Well, you know, it is what it is. That's probably done and over with. I mean, I got a snippet the last time he was there, but now it's. It's done. It's gone. He's not coming back. You know, you can't have it all. Here's the biggest talking point for me, though, besides the topic of the video, obviously, is the Intercontinental Championship match. Look, everybody keeps praising these uh, long-term storytelling. It's boring. It's boring. Did they not learn from the very long-ass, drawn-out bloodline story that's still going on, by the way? You know, last year they had to switch one of the Usos to a brand, to another brand, in order to keep the story going and stretch it out because they had nothing. Nothing. And here, they're just doing this again. Okay? As soon, first of all, Chad Gable should have won the title of WrestleMania. First fucking, fucking first of all. Okay? Goddamn. But if you're going to turn him heel, fine. But as soon as he turns heel, instead of this whole, for lack of a better term, dictatorship that he has going and trying to command these people, it's always disappeared at this point. Just have him kick all of them to a curb and go on a one-man crusade, say, I don't need one anybody, and then the Creed show up like they're going to eventually, and voila. You know, for all intents and purposes, it should have been now. Okay, here's what you do. So, Otis and Maxine were out there, right? They do an injury thing where uh, Chad Gable accidentally gets flung into Maxine, and so Otis has enough and carries her off, right? Well, I think they should have done something earlier in the match where he kind of tells them to use any kind of title and hit them with them. And they say no, and in, in this case, they walk off and say, we're done. And then you have Chad said, that's fine. I don't need you. You know, yell out something like that. Uh, Sammy goes for the Luva kick, but misses. And then, uh, then all of a sudden, these two people in hoodies come up. One distracts the other. One distracts the referee. The other one goes in and hits an attack. Chad Gable hits his O'Connor roll thing. One, two, three. Check out the champion, hoods down, Creed Brothers. Boom! And you're done! You know, they have a rematch of Money in the Bank, which Sammy loses, and we can move on from this terrible Intercontinental Championship brand that should have never happened. Okay, I said, I told you all before, I don't like that Sammy won. He didn't need to. He had his moment last year at WrestleMania. He didn't need it. It should have been Chad's moment. You need to get that Chad, that Chad on, on title quickly. You need to get that title on chat as quickly as possible. Okay? Stop stalling. Alright? Stop it. People keep, again, people keep saying SummerSlam. SummerSlam. No. Okay? Because it's starting to feel like titles can only change hands. Like major titles like Intercontinental United States can only change hands at the big pit groups like WrestleMania or SummerSlam. And we need to stop doing it. You know what else is stupid? Can we? Okay. So they have this whole five match thing for pay-per-views or premium events, whatever you want to call it. No. We need more matches and sh just shorter matches and more of them. Okay. You have 
eight freaking titles. Nine if you count the speed championship, which is not an actual title, but you have well nine actually nine if you ten if you count the speed, nine if you count the women's tag titles, which should be disbanded, but whatever. Uh because it doesn't make any sense. You have separate titles for each brand, but the women's are gonna go back and forth. It's just confusing. But you have nine titles essentially, and only five matches per pay-per-view, and sometimes those matches are wasted on just the non-title matches that really don't need to happen. Here, they were all title matches. That's fine. But if you're going to have eight titles, nine titles, we need more than just a five-match card for it to work. Because then these titles aren't getting defended. And the weekly shows aren't cutting it. Okay? Title matches should be big affairs. Save pay-per-views. They need to be big things. They need to mean something. They don't mean anything. It brings throwaway matches on SmackDown or Raw. You know? They don't mean anything unless they're on big shows like the reviews and stuff. So we can't just... These five match cards aren't cutting it. You know? I'm not saying have nine match cards. No, I'm not saying that. But what what's the lowest you could go pay-per-view cards in the universe? Seven. Seven matches. That should be the limit. Seven, no more. No less. Seven matches. That way you could fit it. Or, if they're going... I thought of this too. If they're going to do... Again, the women's tag titles throw a little monkey wrench in there. But if they're going to do five match cards, then they need to go back to brand exclusive pay-per-views. Because that would work much better with different sets of titles. Think about it, right? You have a Raw schools of pay-per-view. You can have the World Heavyweight title, Women's World title, the, the WWE, te the World Tag titles, Intercontinental title, and one placeholder singles match. Singles, non-title kind of match. Maybe even put the Women's Tag titles there. And you can do the same thing with SmackDown. WWE title, I'm not calling Undisputed. Fuck that. US title, WWE tag titles, WWE women's title. Again, you can do the the women's tag titles, or you could do it's you know an extra match. That would work better. But if you're gonna have these be dual branded pay per views, the five match card will not work. You for a company that says they want to get as much talent as they as they can on a card, they're not doing that. And their solution is to make the big four two-night affairs. And that's bullshit, okay? Because, like, no one should have to pay for two tickets to a show that should be one night. Yes, I'm complaining because in 2026, they bring a summer slime here to Minnesota. And now I'm not probably not going to be able to afford to go. But I'm just saying, if I was planning to go with some of my friends, you know... We'd have to buy two big tickets apiece, and that's... You know, no one's going to be able to afford that, especially in Minnesota. Uh, I don't know how much attendance is that going to be. Maybe they will. I think and people come from other places as well, although I do feel like if it's in a certain place, they should be from that state only, should be allowed, but you can't do that. You know, I understand, but, you know. I'm just saying, like... Maybe they could do a certain thing where the, a, a certain amount of time they're only accepting payments from that state and then once that time is run out and they think that the people from the, all the people from the state have paid or whatever, then they open it to the rest of the world, you know, or the United States, the world, whatever. And then you can go and buy whatever. Be fair. But no, what I'm saying is, it, because like, what, what if it's your dream to go to a WrestleMania or something? But now you have to pay two tickets, and it's like, you can't afford that. You gotta pick a night. But there's like some matches that you wanna see that's on night one. There's some matches you wanna see that's on night two. But you gotta pick one. You know what I mean? And honestly, even with the, you know, brand exclusive pay per views, I think maybe, the, I don't know, shorten the matches. We don't need, like, Triple H has always had an issue with his matches going 20 minutes or longer. But, like, like when he was wrestling, I mean. But, like, 
I just I just think that we don't need not every match needs to be long, you know. You could have every match be like 15 minutes and it would still be and here's the thing, if you take out all the stupid ass uh interstitial thingies and cut remember back in the day when you had to transition you cut to an interview you don't do some sort of buy this shit in your face no 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 you cut to an interview tonight you are going to have a big match against blah 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 blah. you do that while they're setting up for the next match do that and stop throwing products at our face it's annoying all right or don't it's either throwing products to our face or doing a stupid promo about a superstar that's not even on a card. Like, you know, Sheamus, who's not on the card or something. You know what I mean? One time, there's a Seth Rollins thing. I'm like, does he even have a match tonight? No. He wasn't even there. So, I don't know. It just it frustrates me. This video was not supposed to go this long, but once the Scotty starts a rant, then he cannot be stopping. So, but yeah, just... I said my piece. Okay, and I'm not going to call this a review. It won't, it won't be in that Wrestling Corner playlist, but... Yeah, I don't know. I just... I go back to the topic at hand. I just don't like when they do that. It makes the person doing it look like an idiot. It does. It makes Sam Punk look stupid. Because all he had to do was wait till the match was over. Then he can attack Drew McIntyre. And now he'd have a title shot. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. As long as they keep fucking doing it. Thank you for watching. I've been Sky and I'll see you in the next one.